Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a very quick tutorial on how to do that film glowing effect that you see around pretty often. It's a really cool and versatile effect, and there's even some nice chromatic aberration going on in here. Here's what it looks like without the glow, and here's with the glow, and we can even add things like noise and embossing to get more of a lo-fi look. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did this, so let's get started. Alright, so I've got this image here, and I want to add this kind of nice glow to it. How can I do that? Um, you don't really have to know how to do that because I made an action that does it for you and that action is completely free on my website. The only thing you have to do to get it is of course open up my website, scroll down here to freebies, just click view all and if you go to the bottom of the page you'll see there's a sign up dialog to unlock all the freebies. Just input your email in here and you will email all of these free downloads including the distorted film glow. So I'm going to pretty much demo this free action and then I'm going to show you a little bit about how it actually works. Once you download this and install the action, you'll notice that there are six different actions here. There are two separate actions for the film glow. You can either have a green tint to it or a blue tint to it. There's an emboss action and then there's three lo-fi noise actions to get that lo-fi VHS look that I displayed at the start of the video. All right, well, the action is pretty simple. So once we have our image in here, we're just going to click on one of these glow effects and click play down here. And it's going to give us this little dialogue, which I recommend you read. Um, but we're going to press continue. So that you're going to get another dialogue and this one's just going to let you know that the following slider will allow you to control the amount of glow that we have on our image. So I'm going to press continue and in our color range dialogue here we have a pretty much slider of how much glow we can add to our image. So the more of your image that you see pop up in your document over here, the more glow that you'll have. So if I were to turn the range down, more of our image would come through and that means we'd have more glow. And if I were to turn the range up, less of our image is coming through and that means we would have less glow. So I recommend you find a happy medium. Um, you can play with these settings obviously. You can even play with the fuzziness for more spread out effect but obviously that's up to you. I'm going to go with 200 on this one and I'm going to press OK and the action is pretty much going to do all the rest of the work for us. As you can see here we got that really cool glow and halation effect going on and all it took us was a few clicks and if you wanted to add something like embossing or noise to get that lo-fi look it's also just a few clicks. All you have to do is go to the emboss action and make sure your glow folder is still selected and click play on that press continue and that will emboss your image a bit which gives it sort of that vhs look in just a minute you'll see here cool so our image is now embossed and if we wanted to add noise to this we can choose one of the three noise actions here my personal favorite is lo-fi noise 02 so we'll click play on that and we get this nice kind of large grain spread out onto our image but as promised i want to show you a little bit about how this action works so i'm going to hide these layers and i'm going to open up our glow layer over here. And we can see there's two layers in here. There's one for the actual glow, and then there's one for the chromatic aberration. And all that means is when I zoom in here, you can see it more clearly that there's a little bit of a RGB split on here. And if I were to turn this layer off, you can see it disappear. And how we do that is by going into the layer styles of the layer and just messing around with these channels, turning them on and off. So you see, if I turn them all on, we have the full image here. If I turn one or a few off, we get that kind of RGB split onto our image. But anyway, to see how the actual glow is working, we're going to open up this smart object by double clicking the thumbnail. And we can see in here that we have just our black background, a group with all the glow partitions, and a color adjustment on top of that group. So what this color adjustment is controlling is the tint of that image. So if I turn it off, we get the original colors of the image. Um, but if you want to, you can go in here and play with all these settings and numbers and get more of a pink or whatever kind of tint you want to this image. Really powerful and customizable. I'm going to turn that off for now and I'm going to show you why we have all these little layers going on. So I'm going to turn all these off really fast and then it's going to bring us to our original image. And if you remember correctly, our glow is done by going up here to select and color range. And this is the same dialog that we had before. So what our glow does is it selects a certain color range out of the image and that color range is pertinent to the highlights. So we're selecting the highlights basically out of this image. And once we get that selection, we're duplicating it and then we're blurring it a shit ton of times as you see here. And the reason we duplicate it a bunch of times and blur it each time is to get more of a realistic glow fall off on that image. So you can see here, if I turn each of these on one by one, we see that we are progressively building this glow up. And at the end, we get this actual fully fleshed out glow. But that glow is made up of many parts as you see here. And doing this in these many parts just allows us more flexibility and more of a realistic glow. Um, we have more components to it and it just gives it more of a realistic fall off. And that's pretty much it. If you really want to mess with this, you can open up the smart object effects of all these layers 
you can see that they're all just Gaussian blurred at progressive amounts. So if we go down here, the first Gaussian blur is at five and we end it over here at 190. So we're basically, like I said, progressively building this glow based off the highlights of our image, which we selected out using color range. It is a lengthy process sort of, and you don't really want to do that every time you want to add glow to an image. And that is why I created this action to do it for you. And that is pretty much it. I really thank you guys for watching. I hope you get something out of this tutorial. And I hope you obviously go download that freebie. And I want to see what you make with it. So definitely tag me in any artworks you post. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.